Now that you've seen how an array list works and how you can create an array list of different data types such as ints and strings, floats, doubles, let's go ahead and learn how to make an array list of objects. Go ahead and create a brand new project, file, new project. And we'll give, make sure this is a console app.net framework. And I'll give it the name array list objects and click OK. Now remember an array list is different from an array in the fact that it can be like an accordion where it can grow and shrink, open and close. You can make it larger, make it smaller, dynamically. Whereas with an array you set the size and that's the size. So uh, we like the array list because it's more flexible but at the same time we don't like the array list because it is really flexible. Now that sounds uh, different to say, but that array list allows you to have different data types. So we say the array list is not type safe. Because it is so flexible, you could put different data types inside of it, and you never really know what you're working with at any one time. But let's go ahead and come over to here. We'll create a new class by right mouse clicking on our project. Add. Class. And let's call the class uh, student.cs and in that class we're just going to come in and we'll make a public string name and a public int well let's do a double public double GPA and that's all we're going to put in the class for right now actually let's go ahead and put one method let's put uh, a method that's going to return some information and we'll just return a string and we'll call it um, get data and in that get data we're going to return the name we'll say this dot name plus has a GPA of and then add in this dot GPA so that return statement is simply when called is simply going to go ahead and return whatever is in the name concatenated with that string and then also concatenated with the GPA notice we say that it returns a string and we have a return which is the string there's our class let's go ahead and go back to the main program by clicking on that tab and let's create an array list so we'll say array list and um, within that array list we'll just say oh student or how about let's say AL student that way we know that we're working with an array list remember it's just for readability it doesn't force you to do anything with that variable but we like to give descriptive names new and we want to make an array list now remember we still have an error with the array list and visual Visual Studio tries to help you by giving you a little light bulb. Click on the light bulb and it says if you want to work with an array list, you have to go ahead and use one of these things. And we'll go ahead and use system collections. We could even make it more specific and say use collections array list, but I, I like to keep it a little more generic. We now have that array list. Now remember, an array list allows us to dynamically grow that list. We can build elements on the on while the program is running so I could just say al student dot and that's the array list itself what if I said al student bracket zero bracket which says go to the first element of the array list and then dot and that's interesting because now it says you can go ahead and access certain things well I want to put student objects inside of there and it's currently just array list so what do I do how can I work with that well if you remember correctly if you ever want to work with the object the first thing you have to do is create an object so let's go ahead and say student o student equals new student parenthesis parenthesis that's a brand new object and then I could say al student bracket zero bracket equals stud or Better yet, since it's an array list, let's say dot add parenthesis 
and add that object now to the array list. Can I go ahead and access values? Sure. How about AL student bracket zero bracket, which now says access the first element in the array list, which is a student object. And now I could say dot and hopefully try to get to some methods. For some reason, I still can't get to my object, even though I add it. What's going on? So if you notice when you're working with an array and you put an object inside the array element, it was strongly typed, and so it knew you were working with an object. In this case, since we're working with an array list, it's not strongly typed. Remember, that's why it's not safe or type safe, because we don't know what's really in it. And so when I say array element zero dot, it has no idea that it's an object. Usually you'd see attributes showing up for the object. So what you have to do instead, working with an array list, is you have to come over here and you have to typecast that. So we're going to say there's a student object in that first element. But right now, even if I put a dot, it still doesn't work because it's just going off that element. So the other thing I have to do is actually have to add a parenthesis around that whole thing. So this now says, go get the element out of position 0, turn it into a student object. Now I have access to the attributes, and I can work with those attributes and load them up. As you can see, that's sort of a pain that you'd have to do that, but that's just the way the array list works. So if I wanted to access the GPA, same thing. And if I wanted to print that all out, then I would have to actually access the object, typecast in parentheses, then I put a dot, and then I could go ahead and call the get data method. Remember, it's a method parenthesis parenthesis. Let me go ahead and add the console.readline. So we can pause the screen, and I'll run that. And it should go and create a brand new array list called AL student. Make an object, add the object to the array list, go in, grab the first element, turn it into a student, put that whole thing in parentheses. Now we can access attributes and methods. Let's see if that works. So we'll go ahead and run the program, and it says Greg has a GPA of 3. So that does seem to work. What if I wanted to add another object? So I came down here, and let's go ahead and we'll copy these three, these four lines, paste it in. Even though this object's been created once, I wonder if we can go ahead and change it and put a different value in there. So we'll put Mickey. Mickey has 4.0. Make sure you change the subscripts so that you're pointing to the first element, which is really zero here, and the second element, which is one there. Let's run it one more time. See if it prints Greg and Mickey. What I'm curious to find out is, did we just wipe out the object in position zero? Since objects are um, passed by reference, and they're just memory locations, and since I'm using the same variable right here, did we wipe out that data? So let's go see. I just added one more right line. We'll go back to zero, and let's see if it prints off Greg, Mickey, and Greg, or if it says Greg, Mickey, Mickey. And it actually says Mickey. Now, why did it do that? Take a good look at this output. Greg has a GPA of 3. Mickey has a GPA of 4. Mickey has a GPA of 4. And that's because I went ahead and used that same variable, and I instantiated it. Right on this line, I said create a new variable, instantiate it. And that goes out to memory, grabs a memory location for that variable. I add that memory location to the array list. I change its attributes. I then say grab that same memory location change its attributes, and then try to go back to the first one. However, since it's an object, and objects use memory locations, we're just working with the same variable.
So what could be a way to get around that? Well, instead of doing this, I could actually instantiate the object right inside of the array list. Now, the disadvantage of that is I don't have the object specifically that I'm work with, working with. But the advantage could be that every time I do this, it grabs a new memory location, which allows me to hold multiple objects. So let's run it one more time and see if it says Greg, Mickey, and back to Greg. And that seems to work. And that's because objects use references, which are memory locations. And so you got to be careful how you declare those. Uh, what I would do is if you really need an array list of objects, just call the constructor inside of the add. And that's how you make an array list of objects. Be aware that this isn't really a great way to do it because what you're going to see in the next video is that you could use a different data type called the list class.